Hey guys, so I thought to put a little help together with a uh, jam, if you're using a jam board. Um, hopefully this will help you and clarify some things that you maybe need on your poster. Um, so you'd click a new jam. I'm just gonna use, well, yeah, I'll do the same thing. So new and then Google Jamboard. I had someone ask if they can use Google Draw too or Google Drawing and I'm fine with that as well. I'm not gonna do a tutorial about that. Um, so here's what I would say that you need to make sure that you're doing. First of all, you need to make sure that you're using things from the list that I provided. I think it was on Friday in a Google Classroom, so you can go back to it and see it at any point in time. It's shared with you. Um, here's the list of things that we're gonna use, and on your jam, what I want is a picture of them. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna insert pictures of things that you find, and you can do that straight from a Google image, ser image search. So let's say like one of the things that you have on your list is a barn owl. Um, we're going to add that to our um, jam board here. Pick a picture that you like. I would try and make it as small as possible for now. We can always zoom in on the jam board to make it um, bigger. Uh, just play with the zoom and then you'll see things a little bit better. Underneath that owl that's loading up, um, what I'd like us to do is add a sticky. And what we need to do is say that this thing is a, a carnivore. And uh, you could pick a color for your sticky or something. What I found that works pretty well is for some of the carnivores to make them all one color. Oh, that photo's taken a long time to load. Um, and then what I would do is get everything on your list at, um, from your list that you're gonna use or in your web that you're gonna use on the screen first. That's how, how I would do it. So maybe my second thing that I'm gonna have is, uh, I don't know, a field mouse. Um, so you're going to type that in, get an image search of that. Okay. Yeah. You like this one, whatever, select that. We'll put that in, um, make it as small as you can there, that one loaded for whatever reason, the other one isn't. And then, uh, let's add our sticky to that. Now the field mouse, we can call that a, I think we have it as a herbivore underneath our jam, um, field mouse. And they do mainly eat seeds and stuff, so we'll call that a herbivore. So make sure you're labeling those things on your web as you go by. Now remember, you need 10 uh, living things, and definitely some of those should be a producer. So producers or autotrophs are things like um, plants, right? So maybe, what would an, a mouse eat? Well, we see it right there eating a blackberry. So maybe we do like a blackberry bush. Um, blackberry bush. So I'm going to add that as one of my producers. And remember, producers probably take up more um, biomass in our ecosystem than any of the other groups. So actually, I would say maybe a lot of your organisms should be producers. And I'm going to add a sticky to that one. And I'm going to call that one a producer slash autotroph. And maybe that would be a good idea. Actually, I think it would be a good idea to have that on all of yours. So herbivore slash consumer, right? Um, slash heterotroph. There, let's do that. And then the carnivore is a consumer and a heterotroph. All right. So once you have things all together, uh, you can start making your lines. I think the best way to do that is just do using the pen. Um, and what I would recommend doing is using some different paint brushes or some different colors to represent the flow of energy. So here I'm going to use a thick black line from the uh, Blackberry to the mouse. Uh, showing the flow of energy and then the mouse is eaten by this owl that's still loading apparently so I'm going to use a thinner line and I'll make that a different color and you see that the amount of energy goes down as we go up. Now one thing that you need to have also is an abiotic factor and one of those actually you need two of them one of them has to be the sun so um, for the requirements make sure you're reading the instructions I have some different requirements for DA um, my first hour class than I do for the other ones. So make sure you're looking at those. DA, I think you need four uh, abiotic factors on yours. And now, um, going back to that brush, and I'm going to use a yellow one to represent maybe like the most amount of energy. I'm going to try and make this line a little bit thicker to show that there's more energy coming from our sun um, 
and then make our arrow really big here. Okay, so I'm drawing, showing the represent, or trying to show the amount of energy that's transferred uh, and how it decreases as we go up that food web. Let's just try a different picture of an owl. And let's do a barn owl again. Or, yeah. And that's about it. I mean, once you get all of your critters on there, um, then uh, you start linking them up with arrows based on where they um, where they uh, get their energy from. So you're going to have more than just this one little chain. You're going to have a whole bunch of interlinking chains to make this thing a web. So again, make sure you have your ten abiotic or sorry, your ten biotic factors. Make sure you have a number of producers. Add some decomposers as well. Um, that's from this list. And then make sure that you have a couple abiotic factors. If you don't know exactly what you need, make sure that you look at the requirements document that I put on Classroom yesterday right here. Um, for everybody but DA, DA has a different requirements list. There is part one, which is using Google Slides or Jamboard or Lucid Chart, which I'll have other videos for. And then you have to answer the questions and you can write those right at the bottom in like a text box. And if you're using a jam, you can just write the answers in a, uh, in a sticky at the bottom if you want. Um, here's what you need, 10 abiotic factors, or 10 biotic factors, two abiotic factors. One of them has to be the sun, draw arrows where they are appropriate. And there's going to be a lot guys, it gets a little bit messy and that's okay. Uh, and then you have to answer your questions. And again, this is all due by Friday. And if you're in DA, I have a few other requirements on your uh, instructions. So you can check out yours on Google Classroom, okay? If you don't know what things eat what, I'll talk about this a little bit more tomorrow, but definitely hit up these two links. Um, so animals in Minnesota, and you can pick from birds, fish, insects, mammals, etc. cetera. Uh, if you don't know like what an animal eats, let's say you have a coyote on yours, you can go to the coyote page and read about the coyote. But here we have food right here. So carry on as dead material, mice, hares, porcupines, occasionally livestock. So this tells you right here what this thing would eat. It's gonna eat meat products. So it's gonna eat other animals, it's a carnivore. Um, so if you don't know what something eats, definitely um, use those two links that I gave you um, from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. Uh, there's one on animals, and then there's a whole nother one on plants. So if you don't know what plants we have here in Minnesota, you're definitely um, able to come here and look. Maybe you want some trees, um, go to your big tree registry. That just tells you the biggest trees in the area. Um, but you really want to look at the native trees. So these are things that are found uh, here in Minnesota. Deciduous means they lose their leaves. Coniferous means they have um, needles that stay. Um, yeah, and so you can click there and then um, it'll give you a list of different trees um, that are found there. Okay, so uh, good luck. And if you have questions, uh, definitely feel free to just put in a little, little comment in the assignment and I'll be able to check it out.